want to absolutely glorify and magnify your incredible, phenomenal, mind-blowing name. Father, we want to come before your throne tonight and we are reminded of your glory and your fire. We are reminded in the fact that we are standing inside of all of who you are, that we have the power and the glory of the creator of all things overshadowing us 24-7. As a matter of fact, we live and move and have our being inside of all of who you are. And we are about to get revelation of what that means. What it means to live inside of you. What it means to move inside of you. What it means to have our being inside of you. Let's begin to understand the value of the fact that we're inside of you, that we are in. And the power that comes with that glory, the understanding and the authority that we walk in, coming through the four faces as we live in that realm, coming into the creation, looking at what needs to change, what we need to do, how we need to do it, having the blueprints in hand, because we live and move and have our being in you. Father, let's begin to see. And then we also, in the same breath, begin to understand how the enemy will run when a son comes walking down the street full of your glory. Lord, I pray that you will show us bring some intense revelation and regarding this scripture father living moving having our being in you father we love you we praise you we glorify you lord we love our nation we love the nations of the world father we love what you've given us in creation and we want to govern it we want to take our place back in full flow and ask for your help ask for your guidance ask for wisdom revelation knowledge insight i ask tonight father that as we teach this message will open every one of us up as spirit beings and pour dimensions of revelation into our understanding so that this can go into the soul and body and then begin to affect the earth around us. Father, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you, my King, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you, Paul. And let there be light. Love the shirt. Right? Yes. Like neon red. So when I was a kid... I was told that I cannot wear red <laughs> because I have red hair and the two doesn't go together. So when I shaved my head, I started wearing red. <laughs> Tell me I can't wear red. Shut up. <laughs> you guys good? Well, I'm excited. I want to I I see if we can really go into the depth of that one scripture that talks about the fact that we live and move and have our being in Him. Mm -hmm. And I've done it before, but I know that Yahweh takes us on a journey where He goes to a deeper place every time we engage Him. And that's why as we engage Him 24-7, I want to remind you of this revelation. What I know of Him today, I cannot set in stone for tomorrow. And the church has done that over the years of time that we've been in faith. Over the 2,023 years that uh, we have been in revelation of who Yeshua is, we have missed it continuously, thinking that what we know is who He is. And, and I said even in one of my little reels that today, that's not who He is. We cannot bind Him or block Him or stop Him according to what we believe or what we perceive according to what we've read in the Bible, according to what we've been taught, uh, and, uh, who, that that's who He is. Yesterday and the same tomorrow, that doesn't mean that we know Him, that doesn't mean that everything we understand about Him is locked in stone, because what I know about Him today can't even compare to who He actually is. What I know about Him tomorrow can't even compare to the infinity of who He really is. Even what I knew about him yesterday, I, I can't set anything that I believe of my father in stone. Even the very basic logistics, like Jesus Christ is the son of God. Well, yeah, there's, there's a truth and we have to submit to it. And there's value in it, but I have to believe in my heart that he is just throwing nuggets out for where I'm at in my faith. And as I grow, those same little nuggets shift and change and realign itself to where I'm at so that he can pour more revelation into me because he wants to add life to me in the full measure daily and he says he's, he does that through knowledge yeah. now I can't I can't I can do a lot with knowledge but I can do so much more with understanding yes. my knowledge mm -hmm. yeah. and of course if I have, have wisdom regarding my knowledge and understanding I have a much greater open door and of course I get knowledge, understanding, uh, wisdom and counsel. That opens even a bigger door. 
right? And every time I go into my father, when I begin to realize, well, um, if I live in him, move in him, have my being in him, then I'm never separated from him, which means I get to see something new all the time. How are you guys doing? It is in Yahweh, in Christ, that we are complete. And I said this all the time. You know, how many, I said this over the last couple of weeks. How many times, how many of you walked into this door and thought, the first thing you thought was, oh, wow, the foundation of this building is incredible. <laughs> Anybody going once, going twice? Oh, that was the last thing you thought of. Why? Because there's already a building on it. So you walk in and you look at the building and you say, oh, that's beautiful. That's not, my, my focus does never go to the, to, the, to the foundation. Yet the foundation is the reason there's a building. The foundation is the reason why this building is still standing. So in reality, I couldn't even have this building if I didn't have the foundation. Right. right? So we have to move on, and this is what Yahweh is really calling us to do. Move on from the revelation that Jesus is Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now don't misunderstand me. This, this, this name, Yeshua, uh, Ye uh, uh, you know, you know, um, Yahweh, uh, Jesus, Christ, whatever you want to call him, has extreme significance and he's beautiful, phenomenal, mind-blowing and we, we give our lives to him and he's our Lord and our Savior and our King, right? Yeah, yes. But upon me, shifting into him, he wants to build. So we have to understand if it's no longer I who live, yeah. so now we have to understand this because it's no longer Gustav. So it's not me, it's not Gustav. I'm dead. I'm in Christ and I live my life through Him. So in essence, because my life is dead and what you see now is Christ, I have become the Shin. Yep. That is, the old man has passed away, the new has come. Whoa. Jesus was my example. He had a scroll, he had destiny and a purpose, he fulfilled it all. Yep. He had an intimate relationship with the Father. He had compassion for the lost. He loved God's people. He had an extreme desire to do what he sees the Father do. Yes. Yeah. You know, he had miracles upon miracles, but, but when he was raised from the dead, he became the miracle. He became the sign and the wonder. People looked at him differently. Isn't that the Jesus that was just crucified the other day? Hmm. Now, 40 days, he walked the face of the earth fully glorified. Hmm. You know, we have to begin to understand what it means when he says, I live and move and have my being in him. And it's almost like Yahweh wants to open that up. <coughs> Storing up for themselves the treasures of a good foundation for their future, so that they may uh, take hold of that which is life indeed. Timothy 1, 1 Timothy uh, 6, 19. And then we carry on, Acts 17, 24, 28. God, who made the world and everything in it, since He is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made by, uh, by hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands. Now listen to what I'm saying. And though he needs, needed nothing, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things, and he has made, uh, uh, he, he has made from one blood every nation uh, of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-positioned times, and the boundaries of their dwellings. Yeah. So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grasp for him or grope for him and find him. Through he is not though he is not far from each of us, uh, for him for in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. Now, I love that scripture. I can, I can just see how that's designed to change your mindset regarding who he is and who you are. You know, it's almost like Yahweh wants to echo this because this comes out of Acts 17. But this is really what we're focusing on today. It's, it's for in him I live and move and I have my being. Then, and reminding you so, yourself that you are the offspring of the Most High God. Now, Paul makes this statement, and I know that we don't always like to hear that because we can't see ourselves like that. But, you know, many of my confessions in my, in my later days, I say my later days, recent days, what, I, what I've been doing in, in my face, is confessing things that's meant and designed to change the way I think. 
You know, I have that, I always have this mentality that there are certain people in my life that I didn't trade financially into, but because they are financially blessed, it immediately strikes me in my mindset, in my thinking, that I don't want to give to the already rich because I don't want to add to their richness. I want to, you know, it doesn't, it's almost like it's, it's a freak out because that's not what I want to do. I don't want to make you richer, you know, and take off my own. But Yahweh keeps on telling me, son, you have to change the way you think. Because I'm not giving uh, $5, $10, $100, $20 to Ian Clayton. He's already a really, really wealthy man. But I want what he's got. Now, I don't want to be like he is, but I want to trade into his ministry. I want to have the success financially that he has in his businesses. I want to have the success he has in the revelation and in the ministry that he walks in. I want to take what is valuable to me and trade it into something that I can't see, touch or feel. I don't know if what I'm trading into his life is truly coming back to me. But it's like Yahweh wants to bring me to the understanding that when I take what's precious of, of, of mine and I trade it into his kingdom, he begins to open up for me revelation, knowledge, insight, understanding. To break open in my thought pattern the things that will move me forward. Because it's a sacrifice. Moving to America is a sacrifice. Yeah. Coming to the meetings every week where I can be on Zoom, it's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh has also shown me the importance of sharing breath. Yeah. He showed me the importance of coming out to be in a group where there's other physical people around you. And to share the same revelation, because what I release doesn't go through the airstreams. Right. It unfortunately doesn't. It breaks into the ground, goes into the heart of those in front of me. Now, it's a revelation that comes out of my mouth as an oracle, but the idea behind it is that you need to be here to receive it. You need to take off your finances and trade into it so that you can grow and mature. It's a, it's a responsibility. So when I say I live and move and have my being in Him, it's a revelational change in my thinking that has to take place. Because as I give off myself, he gives off himself. But he did it first. So he's my example. So he gives himself completely and utterly to the obedience of what the Father desires. And that we understand is true worship. And he's calling a company of people that will understand that when he talks about life, it says true life comes from Yahweh and the believer we have in Yeshua. Right? Move. Our physical life coming from Him. We, um, li uh, we, we live, we, we breathe, and we move because of Yahweh. He is not a God who is absent, but active in the, 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 minute, the, the, the minute details of our lives. Hmm. Having our being, He is the reason we exist. Now these are things we know, but when we start looking at the life that I live in Him, I have to understand something outside of my natural perception. Because the life I live in the earth is a different life. In this life, I have four kids. I have an ex-wife. I have a fiancé, someone that knew in my life that I love and honor and respect and want to marry one day. In this life, I have spirit schools. In this life, I go to the gym every day. In this life, I have friends and family members that I love and drink socially. But in the life in the spirit, it's a whole other ballgame. Because in that life, I live in my Father where there's rest and peace and there's abundance. Yes, right. There's an overflow of life and there's an increase on a daily basis. Yes. There's a wisdom and revelation that I can't explain or express that comes um, from who I am in Him. And it's the Spirit being, it's me as a primary Spirit living in Him that has this incredible understanding and knowledge of who I am now that I can see Him, touch Him, feel Him. And living in Him, that idea of... Of, of being inside of all of who he is, is the knowledge we now have regarding stepping into the Yad, Hey, Vav, Hey. Stepping into the framework, the window of all of who he is. Yes. And we understand that when I step into that place, every dimension of all of who Yahweh is in every realm, which means the Father, the Son, and Ruach HaKadosh, uh, the angelic realm, the saints of old, the men in white linen, the four living creatures, the 24 living letters, the four, 24 elders, the, the angelic realm, because it's a whole realm in itself. Yes. All of that is in me and overshadowed, and it's really overshadowing me, pouring the dimensions of revelation into me where my spirit man is regaining all the knowledge and understanding and wisdom it had before it was sent into the womb. Because once my soul of my spirit man was sent to the womb, it lost its capacity in its fullness. Because then I became a soulish being born into sin. 
And that immediately started framing my thinking patterns, my understanding, my belief system and who I am. That's why by the time we give our lives to Yeshua, we are blah, 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 blah. Help me Jesus. <laughs> and then we have to go through that process of getting salvation in its full measure. Right? And then, of course, the reality of who we are begins to hit when Yahweh takes us through the steps of growth and we, be go, and we begin to shift beyond the veil and we get to see Him, walk with Him, live in Him, move in Him and have my being in Him. My life then changed because now all of who He is overshadows me continuously, consistently. Which means the growth pattern is not, well, today I feel like I really got to learn a lot. Tomorrow is going to be a great day because I'm going to study and meditate the Word. I'm going to go to church and someone's going to preach a message and I'm going to make notes and I'm going to study those notes and I'm going to know new stuff and I'm going to, I'm going to be a better Christian. I'm going to stop smoking and drinking and I'm going to stop going to nightclubs and I'm going to stop swearing. Well, I don't know about that one. I'm going to stop doing certain things because I know that my God's not pleased by it. As if the cross did nothing. Because well, we, you know, we might go make our focus the issues and the problems we have. But Yahweh is saying that there will be a measure in which I will open up for you. A gate of understanding and revelation as you move closer and deeper into who I am. As you begin to understand what it means to be set in all of who I am. When you begin to understand what it means to put your life into all of who I am within the kingdom of heaven. Where I get to reveal and release to you everything you lost in the time that you've been bound by your soul. Because in that time, all the beautiful, amazing, incredible people that I loved so much in my life was teaching me. But they were teaching me what we would call kaka. <laughs> the sheet you put over your bed on the four corners, it tucks in nicely. That's basically all we got. A bunch of sheep. Thank you, Jesus. Now I say that with the knowledge behind all of this that, well, what they taught us is all they knew and it had great value. Okay, but we have to also remind ourselves we have locked ourselves into that knowledge as if there's nothing more. That's all there is. And Yahweh being an infinite God is looking for a company of people that will understand, well, when you live in me, you can't be limited by what they teach you. You can't be limited by what you know, and you can't be limited by what you understand. Because in me is an infinite dimension of truth that you cannot fathom in the natural. Because your natural capacity has a limitation to the knowledge you can receive and know. Right. You know, when I was uh, in grade um, 9, no, grade 8 and 9 in my school in South Africa, uh, Western Area High School, I had uh, 15 subjects um, for those two years. And you do all those subjects a hard, a hard time, a lot of work, a lot of study. I don't know, it's probably the same year in, in America. But then when you go to grade 10, you have to choose four subjects. Yeah. I mean, out of all those 15 subjects, you can only choose four. Now, Afrikaans and English, which was the, my mother tongue, and then uh, the, the opposite. So either, either you're English, um, and that's your mother tongue, but then you have to take another language. There's 11 official languages in South Africa, so you can possibly choose from Zulu, Kosa, Twana, Afrikaans. And of course, in my, when I was in school, it was just Afrikaans and English. Now I believe that there's whatever your mother tongue is plus English. But anyway, the idea behind this is that I had to choose... Um, two subjects, and uh, four subjects, and in that decision I had to make, I got rid of all the other information and just put all the focus on the four that's really going to grow me and mature me and get me to where I want to be. Yeah. So I want you to understand something. Yahweh is calling a company of people that will set their minds on things that will grow you and mature you because there were subjects like typing that would have been beneficial for me if I... They didn't have a cell phone, because we don't type anymore. Yeah, right. Math has never meant anything to me, because I'm a pastor, I'm a minister. Yeah. So I don't really care how much 2 plus 2 is, although I know it's 4. Yes. <laughs> Wisdom is just flowing out of me. Too. <laughs> but in, in our faith, there is subjects that we put so much attention on that means absolutely nothing. Yeah. But that's no real value. I've heard people fight over the rapture. Is it pre-rapture, mid-rapture, or post-rapture? <laughs> well, the only rapture that there's going to be is me and you daily. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't understand how we think God thinks. If that's the way we think God thinks, that He's going to take all the Christians 
and his Holy Spirit out and leaves everybody else to just die and, and fall away. Because once he does that, there's no life. That's not his intention. He's not an I'm a getting out of here God. <laughs> he is the God that says, well, it's your mess. You fix it. I've given you everything you need. You live in me. You move in me. You have your being. You know exactly what to do. Go do it. Now, there's a company of people that have no idea what I'm talking about. But there's a company of people that has the exact understanding of what's coming out of my mouth and occupying it in creation right now. And we don't understand this, but it's opening doors for every church in uh, the world. For salvation, for deeper revelation, inside knowledge, for all the realities that Yahweh wants to bring into the church. We are the ones bringing it into place. No one can see it. No one even believes it. Matter of fact, to most people out there, we are an abomination and a cult. We are what they call the 13th tribe. <laughs> now, I'm very glad to be different. Looking for the one that says, well, I will go deeper, I will go higher, and I will do exactly what he says I should do. And if it doesn't please you, then I cannot care about that. I cannot cry because you're unhappy and now you don't want to tithe. I can't complain and, and moan because, well, you know, I have to do some specific things in my faith. I have to preach certain things that's not popular, that the church don't like. So I'm rather going to not do it, and I'm rather going to start prophesying over everybody so your tithes and offerings are bigger. No, I have a, a responsibility because I have graduated from all the different little uh, uh, understandings and knowledges and, and, and things preached to understanding the importance of the subjects that Yahweh has put on the tongue of His sons. And let me tell you, it's the kingdom. It's not salvation. It's not evangelism. It's not being a prophet to prophesy. It's speaking and teaching a Yahweh's people about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the breath that we breathe and the power that we carry and who we are as sons. It's all part of that kingdom. Now we understand, and it's logic, because the, uh, the, the foundation of that kingdom is Yeshua. <laughs> but I don't walk into that kingdom and I'm like, oh, it's all about Jesus. No, I'm in Him. I'm dressed in Him. I'm clothed in Him. I can't be separated from Him. I can't not be worshipping Him. I can't not be ministering and, and, and praying and seeking His faith because I'm one with Him. Right. Literally, He is the head and I am the body. There is no separation between the two of us. Yeah. He is also not my husband. Right. <laughs> I don't know what you think about that one. But He is not my husband because I'm a man. So, I don't understand exactly how we considered the whole bride thing, because, yes, but Jesus was a man. Okay, well, why do we think that the church is full of women? Because just the thought for me personally to be married to another man gives me a glitch in my download. It pulls my face all the way up. And I can't express it. I don't want that. And then we begin to understand, well, when you live and move and have your being in Him, He doesn't want you to be the bride. He wants the same covenant, the same level of intimacy, the same crave, the same desire. But it's not sexual. It's not that type of intimacy. It's literally like being the body, and that's what He's calling us to. To understand that oneness, that unity that I carry in my being, that I don't have to say to my body, okay, I'm going to be talking to this group, and what I want to do at this specific time is I want to take my hand and rub over my body like this so I can express what I'm saying. I don't have to pre-practice that. It just happens because my brain and my head and my body is in such unity with each other that certain things just come flowing out all the time. How many of you understand what I'm saying? And you're always calling a company of people that has that revelation. And it comes from living and moving and having a being in Him. Jesus put it this way. He said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. <laughs> it's something that we have to understand. Jesus didn't talk about Himself all the time. He didn't ask people to worship Him. He didn't tell anybody to pray to Him. He talked about the kingdom. It was never about Him for Him. It was always about the kingdom. He's my example. 
Now you have to understand what I'm saying because I can guarantee you there's a couple right now thinking, oh, he's against Jesus. He doesn't believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior 100%. As truly 100% the Son of God. But we have to begin to understand because we have put our focus on Jesus and the only mentality and understanding we have about Jesus is that he died on the cross and he's given me salvation as I accept him and forgive, he forgives my sins and supplies my needs. We have to understand, well, actually, Jesus is way, 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 way more than that. Yeah. Because that is, that's, that's, the, that's the scraping the very barrel of the very last bit of what he really meant to bring or do out. Because in essence, when I step into him and I get to see all of who he is, and I begin to understand the power that He's given me and the authority that He's given me and the person that He's called me to become because of what He did on that cross. I changed my focus, or, and, and, and I say this with the understanding that I've shifted from the side of the veil to go beyond the veil where I cannot just worship Jesus or just worship Holy Spirit, just worship the Father. It is a triune God that will take all the glory out of me immediately without me asking if I could give it to Him. Why? Because it's not mine, it's theirs. And I'm in them and one with them. We are together, one like Yeshua said, well, I've glorified you, now glorify me. Yeah. That is desiring a company of glorified people. And the glorification comes by living and moving, having a being in Him. Let it be known to all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yeshua Christos, of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him uh, this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by the boulders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Yes. Nor is there salvation in any, any other, for there is no other name under heaven um, given among men by which we must be saved. I love that. And that's a revelation we're beginning to understand. There's uh, eons of revelation that sounds just like this out there. Yes. But it's outside of Christ. So it's not been aligned. It's not given in pure light. It has restrictions and it has demonic attack to, atta attached to it. Mm. Look at the destruction that it will bring. Now I'm saying this because we have to understand. In Christ I get the authority and power when I live and move and have my being in Him to align a truth to me. Right. Although I might not always have the full truth to my beck and call with my own understanding, when I'm in Christ, I'm in the Spirit, in truth, which means whatever revelation comes to me is a truth that I can stand on. But I have to get to the point in my walk with Yahweh where I truly believe this 100%. How are you guys doing? Not only is He the only God, but he can, be, he can be known by us. I love that. And I love what Paul says. He says, like, you know, don't eat food that's sacrificed by other gods. And then he carries on about blah, 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 all kinds of things you shouldn't do, shouldn't do that. But then he ends it with this. He says, but just remind yourself, there is no other God. There absolutely is no other God, which means every other religion out there that believes in a different God than ours can be aligned. Correct. Oh, what are you saying? That now there is more than one doorway in? No, there's no, there's no. There is definitely not more than one way in. There's only one way in. But the power and the authority that I carry can take any deceived truth and align it to be pure truth. And the church have been so afraid of this. I spoke about it a little bit today. We are afraid of everything. But the perfect love of God casts out fear. Well, so let me understand something. If we have a fear of everything, then we might just simply not know God. Right. Ow. Yeah. Everything is scary and, oh, that's not from God. That can only be from Satan. How? Can that only be from Satan? How is that even possible? That it's not God's enemy. He goes, hey, you! And Satan doesn't exist. He goes like this. And there's no existence of any enemy whatsoever. You have to understand something. The purpose of, of the enemy is to grow you. <coughs> no, he might not be out there trying to see how he can grow you. He's out there to kill, steal, and destroy. But everything he does against you, Yahweh will take. Turn it around 
to grow you and mature you and bless those around you. We cannot be afraid of revelation. Oh, you can't read the book of Enoch. Uh, why? <laughs> Jesus studied to become a rabbi. He had to study that book. He read all of these books that we are so afraid of. You know, I once bought a Roman Catholic Bible. Have you ever gotten a hold of the Roman Catholic Bible? It's got different books in it. It's got some additional chapters in Daniel and there's some other Maccabee and I don't know what else. There's other books in there. When I realized that, I threw the book away. Now I can't find another one. It's so hard. <laughs> because I was so religious and so stupid. Because that's what I was taught. It's only the Bible, only the Bible. What if I live and move and have my being in Him? Uh, then I begin to realize things that freaks the church out. Because if He said to His disciples, listen, don't build a temple where the Mount of Transfiguration took place. And what happened? Go there now. There's a temple. <laughs> I can almost go as far as to guarantee you. He didn't want a book for us to bind ourselves in and lock him into. There is one now, and we can meditate on it, and we can study it, and we can grow in it, and we can mature in it, but that can't be the all in all. Because my God's not going to be put in a box. It's a love letter wrote to the church. And there's so much more. Because now when I'm engaging Him, I get to live in Him. Wherein I'm inside of Him, I get to engage that, which is the living Word, and the living letters. Which is that spoken dimension of the Word that I can go into, that teaches me at higher levels of understanding regarding who my Father is. Yep. Yeah. It's almost like if we could just see what Yahweh wants us to walk in, everything changes for us. Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Yeah. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what uh, will be the Lord. Sorry, what? But understand what will of the Lord is. What the will of the Lord is. And I love that because he's calling a company of people that will understand what that means. To be in a realm, to be in a dimension, to be in a place where I'm consistently getting added to me. That I'm never the same. I'm never staying the same. I'm always growing, always maturing, always getting new revelation, always getting new understanding. It's almost like he's saying, well, can you begin to see who I've called you to be? Can you begin to understand what happens when you realize and you have a cognitive understanding of what it means to be inside of him. It's not just while well, I'm inside my room. You know, when I'm inside my room, I have access to everything that's there. In my room, there's not much stuff. I have access to all my clothes. I have access to my television. I have access to other garden under my pillow. I've got some knives on the side there. It's just things I do. I've got swords hanging from my wall. I love this type of stuff. So in my room, I have access to all of this. And even in my house, I go to the kitchen. I have access to all the knives and the forks and the, the pans and, and all those things. I don't have many of those because I don't cook. And so what I do is I uh, have lots of microwave meals and I throw all the plates away. That's why I look so good. Don't look at me with that tone. <laughs> but I'm in the house and everything in the house is mine. Yes. It's funny, every, everybody that lives in that house, I will say everything is yours too. Mm -hmm. you know, my kids understand that. They don't have to ask me because it's theirs. I buy it for them. Whatever is in that house belongs to us. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I, come to my, I come in my house this afternoon, I'm like, seriously, Torin, my oldest son, you're wearing my shirt and my pants. How is that even a thing? That's extra large. And the shirt was extra, extra large. You look like a freaking hobo. <laughs> but it's, it's my house where my kids live and it's there. It's, it's there. They want to wear my shoes, they can wear my shoes. I don't care. <laughs> you guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I live and move and I have my being in Him, I have to understand that I've got access to everything in my house. Yeah. Oh, but it's your father's house. No, it's my house. Yeah, that's right. My father's not stingy. My father is not going to say, oh, you have no access to that. I might, I might not have access to certain things, but I will grow into a position where I will get the access I need. Right. You know, I, you have to understand something. Um, my kids are not always allowed in my room. As a matter of fact, I'm not always allowed in their room. Yeah. Now I'm a dad, I'll do what I want. 
But I do respect them. When they ask me that, I'm just doing something. Please don't come in right now. Correct. Yeah, sure. You know, but they know they don't just come into my room. They knock. You know. I mean, now it's a little bit different. But when I was married, you know, you didn't knock on the door before you come in. Correct. You know, there's some things you don't want to see as a kid. <laughs> It's Yahweh we're calling a company of people to have an understanding of all of what's inside of him is mine. And that he's trying to attach these things to my understanding, to my wisdom, to my revelation, to my knowledge, so he can grow me and mature me. How are you guys doing? So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. There are desperate times. <laughs> Don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the Master wants. Look, uh, it's not just living in Him, it's also moving in Him. Now you have to understand, He is everywhere. He is omnipresent. There's no limitations out of space and time, or in space and time. He is anywhere, every time, all the time, at any given time. And I'm moving Him. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Who do you want to engage with? You know, we don't understand spirit travel because we've been told that it's evil and we need to run from it. But there has to be an original. If the Satanists are using astro traveling, then where did they get that idea from? Well, they don't have a spirit because their spirit's not functioning. It's just giving life. They only have a soul and a body. The soul is a spirit. The spirit, the soul, the soul spirit can leave the body, but it is connected because the spirit is the one that gives life, not the soul. So the soul, the cord, is the soul, the spirit giving life to the soul. If that cord's broken, then that person dies. There's an original from that. The, the original is, is being dividing soul and spirit and traveling as a spirit being. And I've said this, I shared this many times. I'm sitting in a spinning class, and a lady comes walking into the room. Now, I understand, in the spinning class, there's many women. And most of the time, I was the only guy. Many women. Help me, Jesus. Uh, way too much estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> Slappy lips. <laughs> <laughs> but this woman comes walking into the room, and she's not a human being. She's a spirit being. She comes walking in from Australia as a spirit. So she traveled from there to here to come see me at 5 o'clock in the spinning class in the morning. And says this, we have a problem, can you help us? I'm like, absolutely. So I'm on the spinning bike, doing my spinning, but my spirit goes to Australia and I engage with them as a dragon appeared in front of them on top of the ocean. There's six of them there and me, and they want to know what to do. And I said, well, let's ascend and go see what the court of war tells us. As we get there, I'm standing back because when you see it, it's your responsibility to deal with it. Well, they had a, a great epiphany. They came to me, not that I know everything, because I don't, I really don't. But I have an idea of what to do. So they stayed with me in that room, and there was other sons in the earth that came up into that realm in the court of war and told them exactly what they need to do and the importance of what will happen once they do that and how that will set the nation on a different tone. So we have to understand that when I live in Him, uh, when I move in Him, there's no limitations to who I am as spirit. Yes. I have followers in Russia, and it's so weird because they always ask me um, to translate my teachings into Russia. I'm like, well, okay, uh, what? <laughs> I don't understand Russian. It's not even alphabet. It's not even alphabet letters. It's like uh, gibberish. Oh. Lamborghini. It's not even a real language. I'm just joking. I don't know. I mean, I can't understand anything of it, but it's, it's weird. Lamborghini? But <laughs> Lamborghini. It's the language. My kids, my little kids are just speaking with their babies. What was I talking about? Uh, spinning. Spinning. Well, okay, so I've got these followers in Russia, and so my responsibility, because I have a lady there that translates some of my messages and puts it on her YouTube channel. I've had thousands and thousands of views, but I go there all the time. Because there's a small group of people that believe the same thing as we do. It becomes my responsibility to go breathe my breath in and over them. To release revelation into that city, into that nation. I'm not going there physically, but I will go there physically. But not right now. So as I have to begin to understand, I can move in Him, and His heart 
passion is for those people as much as it is for Americans. I go to South Africa all the time. I go to New Zealand all the time. I go to England all the time. I'm in different nations of the world all the time. That's where I move with my father. We have to begin to understand that this is a capacity that is given to us and I am not bound or earthbound and I am not just set in one place. I might live in America, but I am everywhere. I remember being in a position where the Father has taken me into Him, traveled and taken me through every human being on the face of the planet. Now, at that point, I think there were 6.8 billion. And He took me through every life. And when we got back, I said, well, you know, I feel fat. I feel overweight. I feel like I'm dragging all this. I poured into you this love on my people. Go where they are. Feel their pain and overshadow them. Have them in your heart, son, so they can change. See, I'm, I'm like God. And you are like God. Amen. Matter of fact, we are God. And those who don't have the same revelation, they know less than me. They have to have this revelation. I can't just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus then. There's way more than that. We have to get to a point in our walk where we understand that it's not just about Jesus, although He's the foundation, and I can go nowhere without Him. Once I step into Him, I become Him. When I, from that position, go into the kingdom of heaven, I come into the Godhead as the Shin, because Jesus is already there. Yes. Yes. He is Yahweh the Son. Yeah. He is Yahweh the Father. It's Yahweh, the Holy Spirit. And then it's okay. Yahweh, the me. And Yahweh, the you. Yeah. Yeah. How you guys doing? Amazing. I know we don't always understand these things because we were taught so differently. But it's in the mind, it's in the way you think. Because if I can change this pattern of belief, if I can think a little bit more of myself, a little bit more of my God, a little bit more of the image that I'm created in and set in, and believe that there's a little bit more power, then we're going to see a greater result. Yeah. That's what he's desiring for a company of people to shift into that place, into that position, to begin to see the light and the life that comes with the sun that operates in full measure. Yeah. Yes. And I've said that many, many, many times in my walk. Mm. How you guys doing? I love this scripture. I'm going to see if I can close with this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now listen, you have your being in Him. The entirety of who you are, body, soul, spirit, is in Him with that frequency resonating over you consistently and continuously. That's why I always say to people, you cannot possibly be in Christ and wake up the same tomorrow morning. If you wake up the same tomorrow, first of all, you're backsliding, and secondly, you're not in Christ. Yeah. Because when you're in Him, He's constantly overshadowing you with all of who He is, and that will affect you and drive you to a deeper place in Him. Right. Now, we have been taught, this is what you have to do. If you are not praying for at least two to three hours a day, brother, hallelujah, you will never become the anointed man of God that He has called you to be. Now, there's a truth in that, because I need to spend time with Him to get to know Him. Yeah. But there's another dimension that He's calling us into. Because we think, well, if I spend time with Him for an hour, uh, whew, I'm going to be so much more spiritual than the guy next to me that only spent five minutes with Him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting in a youth group, and the guy was like, who spent two minutes with God this morning? And about half the people stick their hands up, and I didn't. Huh? <laughs> I was waiting because I spent more time with God than two minutes. And there was a five minutes, and there was a ten minutes, and there was a half an hour. And when the hours come, it was even less. Yep, yep, yep. And yet by two hours, there were like one or two people. At the three hours, I raised my hands. Hallelujah. And then, you know, the light, the halo. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I used to get up at five in the morning and pray until nine that morning. That's four hours on a daily basis, and I would do that right through the day. I set my alarm to keep myself praying. And it's a good thing. Don't misunderstand me. But there has to be a time in your walk where you realize, I don't have to do that because that's not what the Father requests. Yeah. I am a spirit being 
that has the capacity, according to the fact that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that I don't have to travel or go anywhere, that I'm in it, all I need to do is become aware of it. Yep. And in me coming and becoming aware of it, I receive all of it. <laughs> Where worship is just simply being in Christ, being seated in Him, being in the same place as what He is. You, you, look, you can't be in the same place as what He is and not worship Him. But the worship He's desiring is not us bowing to Him, raising my hands with snot and tears coming down my face, singing a beautiful song. Worship's just being in front of Him, having a conversation with Him, spending time with Him, being part of His family, doing the things that He opens up in front of you, engaging it with all of who you are. It's a company of people that understand, well, I live in Him, I move in Him, and I have my being in Him. Now, having your being in Him gives you access to everything in the kingdom of heaven and everything in the earth. It gives you all the right, all the power, all the authority to do exactly what He's called you to do. It aligns you and illuminates you in the fullness of what you need to become. <coughs> when He says that I have, have thoughts, the thoughts and I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. This is the Father's desire for a company of people to have revelation of how desperately He longs for people to look like Him, act like Him, like, walk like Him on the earth. It's more than what we expect, it's more than what we fathom, it's more than we can think. Father, I want to come before your throne right now in the name of Yeshua. And I know that a lot has been said, and I know that it's also a lot has been repeated. And I know that it's a lot that people just don't understand because we can't even begin to fathom some of the things you're releasing. We can't even begin to imagine that we can truly become that in the earth. We can't believe the things that you're releasing now because we have set, bound ourselves to a law of first mention. We have bound ourselves to what we previously believed and knew. We have bound ourselves to what we believe the Bible says. And Father, I pray that we will break that off. That we will break open into a new revelation, a new dimension of truth, where we will sit in all of who you are. We will realize what it means to live and move and have our being in you, that it's not just a scripture in the Bible, that it's an actual place where I can go to. It's an actual activation that I can have in my spirit, man, in my being, to begin to walk in that realm and to understand everything you revealed to me and to bring that into my soul and to pour it into creation, for it to touch my physical body, for the glorification to come in its full measure. Lord, I pray right now and ask that you will ignite this desire to understand and have revelation and to walk in the fullness of it right now to your people, Father God, to ignite a passion to realize and to know in full measure what it means to live and move and have our being in you, to see it, that, that glory that comes, that, that overshadowing, that character, that all in all of who you are, that, that is just constantly on me and attaching itself to me and trying to form and reframe and re-excel re me and put me into the position that I'm supposed to be in consistently, continuously. I ask, Father, that you will align your people, shift us into that place, open us up to become what we're supposed to be, governance, uh, governing creation, taking back what's ours, walking in its full measure. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.